My name is Joe Gilchrist. I started here on April 17th, 1978, with what happened to be my birthday. All we've tried to do since then is try to help people enjoy life and put some of the greatest music, we think, available in the country in front of people. I'm Pat McCall, along with Joe here. I've been here for over 30 years. We got a little thing called Good Times, Good Music. That's our trademark, but you know what? That's an understatement for the tremendous contribution all these wonderful artists have given to the floor of Bama, which has gone on to make us one of the best known honky-tonks in the entire world. As you watch the rest of this, you'll see some of our great players that are reminiscing about the good old times, just like we do. Thank you for being part of this. Hi everybody, I'm Leanne Cresswell. I'm here with Daryl Roberts, one of our players here at the floor band has been here a very long time. And I wanted to ask him a few questions so you and I can learn more about him. So Daryl, first question I have for you is, when did you first come to the Floribama? Because I remember you playing at the Gulf Gate Lodge in Orange Beach, Alabama with Tito. So you came after that? Uh, about that time, uh, Joni and Clark were playing there. And Tito, who was my wife at the time, we would go over there and play with them. But Clark Harris told me one day, he said, Joe Gilchrist needs somebody to play Saturday night at the Floribama. I said, I don't want to play that joint now. I said, no, it ain't that bad. I said, no, nah, it's a dump. <laughs> I said, no, it's it's okay. You've played way rougher places than that. <laughs> I, said, I finally acquiesced. I said, okay. That was 1981, I believe. And I've been here ever since. Who are some of the people you've played with here? Uh, I have played with Jay, and I have uh, played with, with Ken. Neither one of us did long-term things, but we were all friends here. You know, it was like the little rascals, a bunch of young guys that wrote music and played music, living on the beach, being just absolutely bohemian as you can get. Uh, how could it not be fun? Uh, I played with some girl uh, for a long time. Some girl? <laughs> <laughs> you. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Jimmy Lewis, who was one of the the, the first bunch that, that came in, I played with him. Uh, oh, you got to tell us some stories on Jimmy Lewis. <laughs> wait, uh, well, you got to kind of wait till some people die before you can tell stories. <laughs> All right, pick your best one that's not too risque, because I know he's a he's a character in himself. And uh, Jimmy uh, didn't follow many rules, and we were playing probably six nights a week here with a little band that we had called Doc Trash, because we were Doc Trash. Jimmy and I were both live aboard sailors. My boat was right across the street, so it was pretty convenient. And. They called me one Saturday morning, and Jimmy had come in early and started drinking Bloody Marys, and then graduated to whatever uh, Irish whiskey, I believe. Oh dear. And they called me about 10.30 in the morning and said, we need you to come get Jimmy. I said, I don't want him, because <laughs> I knew exactly what was going on. And in about an hour, they called me, would you please come get Jimmy? He's harassing the customers. I said, how's he harassing him? He says, he's bit one of them. Oh, dear. <laughs> I said, well, I ain't coming to get him. You can have him. And about an hour, they called me back and said, come and get him now. I said, what is he doing now? He said, he's chewing on the post out front. Oh, my. Irish whiskey's mean. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I never did come and get him. I don't know where he slept. I think at Joe's house or something. But, uh, so like you said, you had a sailboat across the street and you used to come over here. I know you told the story on stage about your mail was always delivered here. This was my address uh, on my driver's license. The Floribama was my address. What kind of mail? Bills? You didn't have any bills. Mostly from girls around yeah. the country. <laughs> uh, we would uh, make friends with the tourists girls down here. This is way before email and texting. No texting, no email. <laughs> it was snail mail, but it was fun. I would rather have a 
handwritten letter in front of me. That was fun. And we would trade letters, you know, um, from all over the country. And uh, and even meet up again now and then. And it was cool. Well, you know, one of our signature drinks here is called the Bushwhacker. And you had the pleasure of making those one time when Lori Quillhurst was behind the bar. Yes, I did. And tell us that story, because it's a good one. Uh, back then, things weren't as standardized as this place is now. Now it's run pretty ship shape and corporate. Uh, back then it was uh, run by the seat of your pants. Uh, I came in to read my mail early, about 10.30 in the morning. They opened at 11 and Lori was furiously trying to get her bar ready because the 11 o'clock rush. People come in here at 11 o'clock when it opens and start drinking. And I came in all sleepy eyed and wobbling around. And she said, make the bushwhackers, I'm busy. <laughs> okay. So I go back there and I knew what went in there at that time. White rum, dark rum, spiced rum, camora and milk. And you turn the machine on and that's pretty much it. So I did all that, bottle of each, got on the milk and tasted it. Got one of those little plastic shot cups and tasted it to see if it was okay. Me being of culinary <laughs> mind, more spice drum. And I'd go, 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 pour it in. And I would taste it after it circled around a little while. And uh, nasty, sweet white rum. And dump it in. And I would taste it. And by the time I got it tasting like I thought it should, I had to go lay down. <laughs> I was having trouble getting back to the boat. And I woke up about five o'clock in the afternoon with a big head. Oh God. So I stumbled back over here and place was full. You couldn't have got another person in here with a shoe spoon. <laughs> and Lori was behind the bar with her hands on her hip on her hips, giving me this I'm going to kill you stare. I don't know what? I walked over and she just continued with her hands on her hips, nodded down at the end of the bar, and there were four guys sitting at the bar, all with their heads on the bar, taking a nap, <laughs> all with bushwhackers in front of them. <laughs> that is so good. So right after that, they standardized that one person made the bushwhackers in a big five gallon bucket and they just dump it into the machine. Yep, so I it. caused standardization yeah. at the floor of <laughs> That's a great I have story. a legacy. Well, not only are you a phenomenal guitar player and bass player and singer and songwriter, but you're also a retired trauma nurse from Baldwin County, Mobile, that area over there. So you are known as our resident nurse who stitches everybody up and makes sure we all go home in one piece. Oh, I say we all, I'm not included in that. You've never had to do that I to never me. had to sew you up. No, thank goodness. <laughs> but I, I remember one story, it's been a long time ago, about the lady who passed out in here and you were on stage and somebody said you got to come you got to come yeah, yeah i was i was doing a, a very long intro to this song and it started out with me and the band would filter up and by the time the song came in it was full tilt and the guitar player came up to me because they were, everybody would just leave the stage when i started because it, it was a good size intro and then they would just kind of ease back up and he came up and said daryl daryl I'm playing. He said, no, you got to come look at this woman. I went, I'm playing. He said, no, you got to come look at this woman. And I finally realized the urgency. So, okay. Put my guitar down. I went over. And the guy that was sitting with her, and a fairly young woman, probably in her late 30s, was slumped over on this guy. And I knew him. I said, what's going on, brother? He said, well, she's not looking so good. And I looked at her, checked her pulse. I said, well, she's not looking so good. She, she's dead. <laughs> dead? So she had no pulse. She was pulseless and breathless. So I moved him out of the way, laid her. They had a booth, like that seat over there. And I laid her down, started compressions. And there was another nurse that I worked with in the, in the trauma center, saw what I was doing and came over there. And we started doing two-person CPR. 
and I got on the phone, called the helicopter at my hospital, and I got, got a cardiac arrest here. CPR is in progress. Come on. And I heard that bird come in, land on the beach out there, and I was, oh, thank God. And by the time they got in here, we had her back. Oh, wow. I had a very low heart rate, but that's better than nothing. That's right. And they got her got her on and, and uh, took her to the hospital, and she survived. That's wonderful. But uh, generally, it was just bobos that I had to deal with over here. People would do crazy things. Do you remember any um, fun fights that you witnessed in here? They were never fun to me. I would just <laughs> <laughs> kind of get mad at them and go, say, quit this stuff. We're having fun here. <laughs> <laughs> you got any stories on Joe Gilchrist? I lived with Joe. So yeah, but I can't tell any of those. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah. Two guys living together next to the biggest beach bar in the world. Yeah. No. I know we had a hot tub out there. That's when the house, his house was where Phoenix 10 is now. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't get in the hot tub. And now that house is across the street on uh, next to the marina on stilts. Yes, it is. Uh, we call it the house formerly known as the beach house. Yeah. <laughs> now they call <laughs> it the river There's still some parties going on in there. I know yeah. when all the songwriters come in town, they stay there with some big bands. Yeah. Nothing like it was over there. God. Yeah. Oh, what a mess. <laughs> it's like five bedrooms, I think. Mm -hmm. Five bedrooms, five baths. Yeah. A big great room and a kitchen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there was a lot of great songs written there. Uh, at that table that is still over there in that house, I sat with many of my songwriting heroes and even wrote with some of them, was taught by them, uh, mentored by them, actually taught me to write and sort things out, how to make the craft out of writing and not just be a cathartic, spill your guts on a piece of paper. Wow. Uh, and was taken to Nashville uh, by Red Lane, came and got me. I was playing a solo, and I saw him over on the benches, right over there in the old room. And I got through him, I said, hey brother, what's going on? He said, I want to talk to you. And we went in the whiskey room, because that's where the band hung out, mm -hmm. <laughs> and on a bunch of whiskey boxes. Mm -hmm. And uh, he told me, I want you to come to Nashville with me, and you can live with me, and in a year you'll have some cuts. To a young guy. That was the promised land. Absolutely. Yes. Heck yeah. I lasted three weeks. I did not like that place. <laughs> oh, wow. I didn't like it at all. And Red could be a pretty stern guy. Now, so I went to tell him that I, I wasn't going to do this and was expecting the lecture because he was good at giving them. And when I told him, I said, man, I. I can't do this. This isn't me at all. And I will always write. I don't care if I ever get a cut. I really don't. I still don't. But I write all the time. And instead of like some beautiful me, songs that you've written. He uh, he uh, he kind of chuckled a little bit, which I wasn't expecting. And he said, "I knew, I knew you were weren't going to last, but I wanted to give you the chance." And I said, "And I appreciate the heck out of it, and I love you to pieces, but." I miss my boat and I miss the beach and I miss playing. Yeah. And he said, I know. And, uh, but we remain fast friends. Did you ever write any songs time. with him? Yes, I did. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Several. Uh, Ricky asked me to do a, a song that I'd written with Red Lane. I, I've written a bunch of it, but he was my mentor. Red is a Hall of Famer. Um, he came down here and got me and took me to Nashville and, and took me to those places and made it where I could get into those publishing houses and get my songs heard. I hated it. I absolutely hated it. I came back home. I lasted three weeks. But uh, we still wrote together. We were very good friends at the time of his passing. But this is the last song that I had an idea. He called me up here and said, I want to come down there and hang out with you. Come on, brother. We did for three or four days. I didn't know he was sick. I didn't know he was 
really in bad way. But I went to him and I said, I got an idea. I just got the chorus written. He said, that's what you always write. And I played the chorus. And Rick could be very brutal with honesty. Many times I have played him an idea and he said, that sucks, son. <laughs> oh, okay. You could not wear your heart on your sleeve with him. But I played this and uh, he said, I want to write that with you. And then he started lecturing me on how to be a writer. I didn't know that he was about to check out, but he, that was important to him. So I spent like three hours listening to him tell me how to be. And I never got to write it with him. So six or eight months later, I went, I got to do that song. With the wind. Just when you thought I'd settle down, I'd be up and gone again. And all the while you stayed behind, holding my heart's key. Now I'm asking you to shelter me, shelter me, shelter me. to your breast wrap me in your tenderness shelter me so we've been playing music together for about how long uh well over the years we've played in several different situations with a different mix of people uh what we've got going right now i think is 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 uh very settling with what we do and we have a good time and it's not only the music which is great it's, it's really feel good, but uh, the crowd has become our friends. Yes, they have, and it's it's a great crowd in here when yes, we play. Yes, We uh, very much appreciate that, too. Well, it's been a pleasure sitting here talking to you, Daryl. Sometimes we don't get to do this unless we're on stage, and I know you get mad at me when I cut you off telling your stories, but I didn't have to today. <laughs> it's been fun. I hope we get to do it again. Yes, indeed. website and you can find us there anytime you want to come. We read it here on Fridays from 2 to 6 so if y'all can make it back we appreciate it. It shouldn't take you long today. I got the music on a country song. I'm waiting with a mile long, clever, something to say. Well, here comes a little cutie, blue eyed beach beauty. Whoa, she's bikinoly clad. And I don't even know her name, but she's driving me mad. I need a little whiskey. I want a little wine. Time. A little kiss and a hug yeah, on the floor of my life. I need a little whiskey. I wanna have a good time. I offer her a drink. She doesn't even think margarita on the rock. She smiles. We were strolling up the boardwalk, making with the small talk it was innocent, but after a while. She was dancing on the tabletop, this cute little baby, my keys looking back my way. And I'm glad I'm me today, that's all I can say. I need a little whiskey, I want a little wine. I need a little love and honey all the time. A little kiss and a the world I'm alive. Need a little whiskey. I'm gonna have a good time.
When the moon shines bright On those sweet sunny nights I'm gonna be ready For the ride of my life Just gonna run up my world When she smiles that smile It's a little piece of heaven If only for a while I need a little whiskey Hey y'all, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel, Floribama Spotlight. If you're into live music, beach vibes, bushwhackers, and random shenanigans, then make sure to hit subscribe to follow all the good times we have right here on the line. And while you're at it, give us a follow on Facebook, at Floribama, Instagram, underscore Floribama, and Snapchat, Flora-Bama. And make sure to keep watching us at Floribama Spotlight. Yeah.